I am Shred Beer. I'm a PhD student at Stellenbosch University under the supervision of Professor Catherine Estrazen and co-supervised by Professor Len Barber. The work presented studies carbon dioxide adsorption onto porous, flexible metal organic frameworks, or MOFs. MOF 508, seen in the figure with zinc as the metal shown in cyan, has been shown in literature to absorb carbon dioxide, as well as to show a flexible response under carbon dioxide pressure. This mechanism was studied computationally with a variety of 3D transition metals using Material Studios 2020 CASTEP and sorption modules. By studying the mechanism of the absorption quantum mechanically, we aim to understand the interactions leading to the absorption, which can then be optimized for applications in catalysis. The metal series investigated consists of isostructural metal organic frameworks. Optimized geometries were obtained with the CASTEP module for each structure, employing a full unit cell optimization. Similar unit cell parameters were obtained within a 1.5 standard deviation, except for scandium. This confirms the isostructurality of the series. Although scandium does not fit into the isostructural series, it was still included for completeness. Isotherms for carbon dioxide absorption were calculated for the series from 0 to 15 bar of carbon dioxide. This shows under which pressures sorption is possible for the different structures. After this, the most probable location for adsorption of a single carbon dioxide molecule was calculated with the sorption module. Multiple carbon dioxide molecules can be absorbed, but only a single molecule was considered. The adsorbed structure with a single carbon dioxide molecule was optimized again. Since the sorption module only considers a rigid framework, this was an attempt to describe the framework flexibility due to gas pressure. The sorption isotherm and location calculations can then be repeated on this new optimized absorbed geometry for multiple absorption cycles, optimizing the unit cell after each newly added carbon dioxide molecule. With a single carbon dioxide molecule absorbed, the structures were optimized with a full unit cell optimization using the CASTEP module. Based on the unit cell parameters obtained from these optimizations, the structures were still isostructural. Considering the changes in unit cell parameters, the copper structure shows a greater change, suggesting more dynamic behavior. In general, it was found that the A axis expands while the B axis contracts. When considering the electronic structures, we want to find the electrons that are present on the carbon dioxide molecule, which are correlated with the electrons in the framework. If we change the electronic structure in the framework, the electronic structure of the carbon dioxide will also change. In the three images on the left hand side, we see that the electrons in the carbon dioxide are correlated with the electrons in the ligands. Although no direct correlation is observed between the electrons on the carbon dioxide and the electrons on the metal. There is correlation between the electrons on the carbon dioxide and the oxygens of the carboxylate groups. There is also correlation between the electrons of the metal and the oxygens of the carboxylate groups. This suggests an indirect correlation between the metal electrons and the carbon dioxide electrons via these carboxylate groups. The same trends in the interactions are observed for all metals, but with different energies. This would suggest that the metal plays a role in the strength of the absorption interaction by adjusting the number of electrons on the carboxylate groups, consequently changing how the electrons are moving around on the carbon dioxide molecule. In conclusion, it was possible to determine the unit cell parameters for the desorbed as well as the adsorbed frameworks. Isotherms were calculated under a range of carbon dioxide pressures and the favorable locations for carbon dioxide molecules were determined. The electronic structures showed that the metals have a similar interaction with the carbon dioxide and further work is looking at ways in which this interaction can be quantified. Finally, I would like to thank my supervisors Professor Catherine Estrazen and Professor Len Barber for their continuous support, Stellenbosch University for funding and access to resources, 
as well as the CHPC for the opportunity to present this work.